To understand REST API, let's break it down into two parts, REST and API. So what is an API? An API stands for Application Programming Interface. It defines a set of rules and acts as an intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. Developers expose or create APIs so that other applications can communicate with their applications programmatically. You can think of a web API as a gateway between clients and resources on the web. Clients are users who want to access information from the web. The client can be a person or a software system that uses the API. Whereas resources are the information that different applications provide to their clients. Resources can be images, videos, text, numbers or any type of data. And the machine that gives the resource to the client is also called the server. So this is all about an API. It basically defines a set of rules and acts as an intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. Now that we know what an API is, let's understand the term REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. REST is a software architecture that imposes conditions on how an API should work. API developers can design APIs using several different architectures. And amongst all those different architectures, the APIs that follow the REST architectural style are called REST APIs. Web services that implement REST architecture are called RESTful web services. The term RESTful API generally refers to RESTful web APIs. However, you can use the terms REST API and RESTful API interchangeably. So finally, what is a REST API? A REST API is an API that follows the design principles or conditions of the REST architectural style. Now to dive in a little more deep, as I mentioned above, API developers can design APIs using several different architectures. So what are the principles of the REST architectural style that ensure that an API is a REST API? Well, here are the six design principles that an API should follow to be considered a REST API. Number one, uniform interface. This means all API requests for the same resource should look the same, no matter where the request comes from. The REST API should ensure that the same piece of data, such as the name or email address of a user, belongs to only one uniform resource identifier or URI. This means you can map URLs to resources. For example, let's say we have the following URI, which is a GET request, which is a type of HTTP request. Now this URI is trying to get a particular movie, which is the resource, from the list of all movies using the movie ID. Hence the slash movies slash movie ID. The second design principle is called client server decoupling. This states that in a REST API design, client and server applications must be completely independent of each other. The only information the client application should know is the URI of the requested resource. It can't interact with the server application in any other way. Similarly, a server application shouldn't modify the client application other than passing it the requested data via HTTP. The third design principle is statelessness. In REST architecture, statelessness refers to a communication method in which the server completes every client request independent of all previous requests. Clients can request resources in any order and every request is stateless or isolated from other requests. This means that every request and response cycle is independent of all others. The fourth design principle is cacheability. RESTful web services support caching, which is the process of storing some responses on the client or on an intermediary to improve server response time. For example, suppose you visit a website that has a common header and footer images on every page. Now, every time you visit a new website page, the server must resend the same images. To avoid this, the client caches or stores these images after the first response and then uses the images directly from the cache. RESTful web services control caching by making sure the API responses from the server define themselves as cacheable or non-cacheable. The fifth design principle is layered system. In REST APIs, the API calls and responses go through different layers. The client and server applications do not connect directly to each other. There may be a number of different intermediaries in the communication loop between them. You can design your RESTful web service to run on several servers with multiple layers such as security, 
application and business logic working together to fulfill client requests. These layers remain invisible to the client. The sixth and the last design principle is code on demand. REST APIs usually send static resources as response. But in certain cases, responses can also contain executable code. For example, when you fill a registration form on any website, your browser immediately highlights any mistakes you make, such as an incorrect phone number. It can do this because of the code sent by the server. So in REST architectural style, servers can temporarily extend or customize client functionality by transferring software programming code to the client. So these were the six design principles that an API should follow to be considered a REST API. I'm pretty sure this should have cleared the definition of REST APIs for you. But there's one more important thing to discuss, and that is how REST APIs work. REST APIs allow communication between client and server via HTTP requests to perform standard database functions like creating, reading, updating, and deleting records within a resource. For example, a client interacts with a resource by making a request to the endpoint for the resource over HTTP. The request has a very specific format, as shown here. The highlighted line contains the URI for the resource we would like to access. The URI is preceded by an HTTP verb, which tells the server what we want to do with the resource. A POST request means we want to create a new resource. A GET request means we want to read the data about an existing resource. A PUT request is for updating an existing resource. A DELETE is for removing an existing resource. You might have heard the acronym CRUD. This is what it stands for. The response information from a server can be delivered to a client in any format, including JSON, HTML, XLD, Python, PHP, or plain text. However, JSON is the most popular format because it's readable by both humans and machines. In the body of these requests sent from client to server, there could be an optional HTTP request body that contains a custom payload of data, usually encoded in JSON. The server receives a request, processes it, and formats the result into a response. The first line of the response contains the HTTP status code to tell the client what happened to the request. A well-implemented RESTful API returns proper HTTP status codes. The 200-level status code means the request was successful. The 400-level status code means something was wrong with our request. For example, the request contained incorrect syntax. At the 500-level status code, it means something went wrong at the server level. For example, the service was unavailable and so on. Now lastly, taking all of the above into account, REST APIs provide a flexible, lightweight way to integrate applications and that's why it is so widely used. This is all about REST APIs in a brief and concise format. If you learned something new, please hit the like and subscribe button and as usual, stay tuned for more.